Um, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, this is the Vivid uh, webinar, and to make sure you're on the right, correct one, it is called Improving the Customer Experience with Avatars. Uh, so welcome. Uh, this is brought to you by um, the, the BSM SIGs, and the leaders are pictured below. Um, Jim Copio, Mark, who happens to be actually the presenter, Rocky Pisto, and Sandy Schubert. Next slide. And my name is Jim Copio. I'll be kind of uh, facilitating this uh, webinar. And um, Jim Copio from Whitlock, a partner of uh, HP Software, um, as well as a, um, a Vivid co-lead for BSM SIG, and also uh, a leader in the Carolinas in the United States. Uh, Mark is our presenter, and he's been with the Vivid Group for a long time, and an HP partner as well at Sopra Steria. Um, he's a technical architect and of course uh, a BSM SIG leader um, as well. So next slide please. Okay, so this is pretty simple. Um, this is the instructions for housekeeping. Uh, it is a live session. Um, we will be having uh, recordings available in a few days. You'll get an um, email and you can click on that and or just go right to the Vivid site and there's an archive list of all the previous Webinars, so that will be available, including the slides and including the Q and A that's done at the end of this. Um, very important to type questions. We we love questions. Um, there's a pane that you'll see uh, on the upper right generally, and you just type it in the box uh, and pr press submit or send, and then they'll be compiled. And as we get towards the end, we'll field every question that we can and have time for. And again, that'll be archived um, as well. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so I'm actually going to be simple here and just turn it over to Mark, and he's going to go through this uh, improving customer experience with Avatar, and then I'll, I'll do wrap up towards the end and definitely get those questions in. Mark, please. So, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, welcome to the uh, session. Um, as Jim said, my name's Mark Laird. I'm a technical architect with Sopra Steria. Um, and the presentation today is really around what we're doing with avatars um, to improve the, the customer experience. So I'm going to do a quick introduction to Soprasteria, look at some of the reasons that we're finding for um, why we need to make a change, uh, what some of the challenges are um, we have, we've had with uh, implementing it, how we've linked that to big data, um, and how we're actually uh, taking advantage of some of the uh, the data we're getting, and then some of our future plans, and then I'll open it up to uh, Q and A. So an introduction to Soprasteria. Um, so we're a, a, a new, relatively new company. We were formed last year uh, between a, a merger between uh, Sopra, who were a, a large French. Uh, applications house and Steria who were a again a European um, uh, infrastructure management house um, we're top four uh, IT provider in France uh, top 10 in Europe um, and there's now th over 37,000 people work for the company uh, across 20 countries primarily a, a European organization as I said um, we've got uh, 17,000 staff in France, um, 6,500 in the UK, uh, and then 8,500 across the rest of our European countries, uh, and offshore, uh, another 5,500 people. Uh, a, a, a good European presence with uh, some other, other countries. And what we're looking to do is basically to improve um, our client's life. Um, we're looking at digital transformation. We want to um, power growth. Um, through cloud, through cyber security, through big data, and taking advantage of uh, mobile applications and, and mobilizing the workforce. And a few of our clients, um, I've tried to include a few from uh, all over our, our organization. So there's ones there from, uh, from most countries um, and uh, some fairly large clients. Uh, there's a few small ones, but uh, so obviously some fairly large clients there. Now our partnership with HP uh, has been going now for over 10 years. Um, we've been an HP partner since 2003. 
we run our own key services on HPE software. Um, so our service desk, for example, runs on Service Manager, um, and we're currently migrating um, some of our clients onto uh, HPE Service Anywhere. Um, so that makes us uh, both a partner, um, so we sell to our customers, but we also run um, our own platform, so we understand um, the pains, the challenges um, with implementing these, these large platforms for our own use. Um, we've been on the Customer Advisory Council, what was the Customer Advisory Board since 2009 um, across IT service management, uh, business service management, uh, cloud and automation and mobility. And we've been a design partner and, uh, and, and an early adopter on a range of HPE products um, for the last five or six years. We've also presented at uh, key HPE events um, and, uh, as Jim said, I. I personally support uh, the Vivid uh, Business Service Management Special Interest Group. So, why do we need to change anything? What? Why can't we just stay with the status quo? We can't. Um, our customers are demanding mu much more. Um, our customers want to be able to solve problems themselves um, without calling the service desk. Um, we've got customer requests for 50% of calls to be answered or to be dealt with without a service desk. Uh, we've, been, we've actually got a customer who's looking for 100% of calls to be dealt with without the service desk. The customers are looking for us to actually be able to easily answer repeatable questions. So if it's a, a Microsoft Office question or if it's a, um, a, a PC question, they don't want to um, have to ring the service desk. If it's a password reset, they want to do it themselves. Just to actually improve answers over time. So they want us to understand what questions are being asked and they want us to build that knowledge base. And they also want us to support multiple channels. Um, so whether this is through a self-service portal, through an instant message, uh, through email, um, and probably actually as a last resort, ringing the service desk. The second one, really, second reason really for, for us is that there's a cost to call in the service desk. So for us, it, there's, there's a cost of actually answering the call, there's a cost of staffing the service desk, um, with, there's a cost of the physical location. And for the customer, it takes time to call the service desk. Um, even if they get through uh, immediately, um, they still have to actually pick up the phone, dial the number, uh, ring the service desk, get an answer, or maybe not get an answer, but actually then get a ticket and have that um, dealt with. So that all takes time. Um, and our, our, our other real reason for, for making some of these changes is that we need to make some uh, additional capacity on our current platform. So as I said, we have a, a number of large installations uh, HP Service Manager. Um, we're currently on uh, 9.41, which is the latest release on our central platform. Um, but some of these upgrades take time, and for some of our um, dedicated platforms, some of our secure customers, um, they can they can lag behind the central upgrades by um, up to six months sometimes. So we need to actually uh, fill that gap. So what we're going to do? So there were a number of things that we want: um, improve the the, the self-service experience. Speed up the time um, for resolution for simple queries. Reduce our support costs. Provide innovation to our customers. And support the customer requirements for 100% self-service. So what we've been looking at um, is a solution. Uh, it's called uh, Living Actor. Um, and essentially, once the, the customer logs in um, through, through the portal, usual um, email, the bottom uh, right hand corner, um, so this would just be one of our, um, either on our intranet um, or in this case this is this is Propel, um, we get a, a, a pop up in the corner, very similar to what you would see on um, quite a number of um, support websites, whether that's uh, Amazon um, or your, your local electricity company, um, you'll see these little pop ups now saying, you know, can I help? Um, 
And if I scroll down again, the, the avatar stays there uh, in the bottom right hand corner. So it's always there um, asking for help, essentially. If I ask the question, um, so in this case, um, the, the example here was uh, how to open a VSD or a VSDX file. So um, the, the question I put in was how do I open a VSD file? So it's fairly um, it's English, it's a, a natural language, I don't have to, to phrase my question um, in any particular way. And the avatar comes back with an answer that uh, basically tells me how to, to open the file. Um, now in this case, um, it then directs you to um, a catalogue. Um, we, again, it's using Propel. Um, but it, it basically allows us to link the the answer to a service request catalog. Um, so if the customer doesn't have um, the, plat the, the software required, um, then we can actually help them to um, put it down onto their machine. Um, in this case, the Visio viewer is is a um, a free piece of software uh, from Microsoft. So we can we can point them at the catalog and we can actually then show them how to, to install software. And here we are um, actually driving the customer to uh, into Propel, uh, in this case to the, the catalog, um, to request Microsoft Visio Viewer. What also happens is and what we've done within within the solution is to look at um, how we could extend this out into a chat. So initially, you've got a um, an avatar. It's a it's a computer. You're having a conversation with the computer. What we've done though is to say if we haven't managed to answer your 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 query and you've asked the same question uh, three times or you've sat on a question for uh, longer than a, a trigger um, in, t in terms of numbers of seconds, so in this case we've put 30 seconds, then we pop up a little, uh, little an, an extra little box that says do you need help, um, yes or no. And at that point we can actually drive the, the interaction um, the, the, into a, a real uh, instant message chat. Um, so it actually then brings up another window um, that actually then allows you to talk to a real person. And this is just a, a standard chat, uh, it's a standard instant message, instant message type chat. Um, the chat operator will see all of the conversation that the, uh, the user has already had. Um, so the idea is that they, they don't go and ask the, uh, the same questions again, they don't uh, they don't go and say, oh, you know, have you tried this or have you tried that? They will see all of the questions that have been asked. Um, and we can then actually um, hopefully resolve it um, with, with the next level of intelligence being provided by, by a human. And at the end of the conversation, um, so once the, uh, the agent and the, uh, the, the customer have decided that um, the call is finished, there's a, an immediate feedback form um, about that basically allows the customer to, to comment on whether the you know the agent was uh, understood what they wanted, um, whether they were responsive, um, and how they liked the overall satisfaction um, of the call. So it's that immediate feedback to to the team to say yes we're doing it you know we're doing a good job or we need to improve things. So what were some of the challenges that we had? Um, the first one was actually getting getting the code into the right place. Um, so the, the code by default um, opens up a new window. Um, now we didn't want that to happen. We wanted the window to actually sit uh, in inside the frame um, of of our uh, of our internet and within Propel. Um, so what we did was to actually embed it into the uh, the, the page itself. Um, and this means that the, the living actor um, pop-up, the little window that you see, is there all the time. Um, as soon as you sign into the system, you get the, you get the living actor page. Um, we've done the same for customer intranet, uh, so that's there all the time. Whether you know 
whether you need it, you don't have to wait for it to pop up. Um, it's always there. The second challenge that we had um, was actually building some standard code. Um, so we were looking, again, uh, for some of our solutions around um, uh, keywords. Um, and what we had to do then was to actually build some code that we could cut and paste very simply um, across a number of our a number of our customers. We've got a maintenance overhead on this at the moment, um, and we're looking to uh, improve uh, what we can do on this one. The other challenge that we've got, and we're working with uh, with the with the, 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 the software house at the moment, is because we have a number of browsers within the platform, um, we, we as a company support Internet Explorer as our, our default. Um, some of our development staff use uh, Google Chrome. Um, we've got Firefox. Um, sometimes the, the avatars don't, don't quite appear um, where they should do. Some of the screens don't quite format properly. Um, so what we, we what we're still trying to do is develop a, a nice clean interface um, that's actually going to give us a, a, the same look and feel, uh, regardless of the, uh, the browser that our customer is looking for. It does work on uh, mobile devices. Um, it's it's fairly clean. It looks it looks nice on the mobile devices on Safari, um, but it's it's a bit clunky um, still. So it's something that we're working on um, at the moment with with the, the software developers. So what have we seen from the benefits? The first one really is around faster and easier resolution. Um, so we're finding the users are able to solve their, their issues quicker. Um, they don't have to call the service desk. Um, they're, uh, they're actually able to deal with uh, a range of challenges, whether that's um, uh, PC things or whether it's uh, password resets. We're finding those um, those questions being dealt with much faster. Um, we've been looking at, around um, voice technologies um, for uh, some of our customers, again, talking to uh, the avatar. Um, and that's giving us a, a potential for using it as a, what we call an assistive technology. Um, so again, looking at uh, some of our um, blind potentially, um, so we can actually allow them to talk to uh, the, the avatar. And people can actually use it to interact the system in a much more uh, friendly manner. So again, whether it's uh, directly going into the, the question and answer panels um, or waiting for the pop-up to appear so they can have an IM conversation with the, the customer. One of the other challenges that we've had is that we're having to uh, change the way that we work. Um, so from a service desk perspective, obviously we've taken um, a reasonable percentage of our calls to then now being answered directly by the uh, by the users, um, but we've had to move some of our service desk staff onto uh, onto an IM onto chat um, functionality as well. So that's giving us uh, that's given us some organisational challenges that we're uh, we're having to look at. It's allowing us to reduce cost um, and add value. Um, so the self service um, solves interactions faster. Um, so the customers are happier. Um, they're able to uh, deal with their own queries. Um, they don't have to talk to the service desk. We get less calls at the service desk. Um, we're currently seeing it around. Um, it's around 20% at the moment. We're hoping to get that up to uh, to 30 and maybe higher. Um, and what we're finding with the chat feature is that um, one service desk agent can support up to conversations. Um, so they can be having six instant message conversations at a time. Um, so they can actually, they can take on more workload. So how does this link with big data? Um, every time that the user interacts with the system, um, we, the interaction data is stored. The system itself uh, is, a, is a big data platform. So the data itself is, is analyzed uh, in, in near real time, um, so we can actually understand what the, the users are asking about. And quite importantly for us, 
is that we can see questions that are not answered um, or that result in a form. Um, so by default, if you ask the same question um, a number of times, you'll get a pop-up that says, can we, can we help? Can we, can we, do you want to talk to an IM? Um, but for some of them, we'll, we'll actually give a form that says, look, there's nobody, um, there's nobody available on instant message. Uh, would you like to uh, just type your, your, your query? Uh, we'll raise a ticket. So we can actually, that we'll take all of those questions that are unanswered, um, that have not been able to be um, fixed, um, and we can actually then use those to build uh, additional knowledge articles um, and add items to the catalogue. And if I just go show you a slightly larger screen, um, so this is a, an example from the, uh, the, the background um, database. So we can have a look at the number of positive interactions on the system, for example, versus the number of negative ones. We can see the number of the most used sequences. So in this particular case, we had uh, 20 defined, uh, but only eight were actually being used. Um, we can see the number of users. Uh, this is our, our demo platform. Um, and we can actually look at the, the number of sequences that are being played um, through the system. If we have a look at the detail, um, and all of this is just through a sort of simple drill down system, um, we can see the types of questions that are being asked. So in this case, um, just under 50% of the questions are around Microsoft, um, and the, the next popular categories are around email. Um, and then we, then we get down into slightly smaller numbers around approvals and things. Um, but we can also see the types of the actual questions that are being asked. Um, and more to the point, we can look at the questions that aren't being asked. Um, so one of the things that we can do then is build, uh, is, is spend time either teaching users, um, providing more training, um, or just concentrating on areas that are of importance to our users. Um, chat scoring. Um, so each of the chats, again, um, is, is scored so much in the same way that the uh, the, the question and answer panel works. There's, there's a whole series of chats, um, big data pieces. So we can have a look at the number of conversations that are occurring. Um, we can have a look at the number of conversations by hour and the, the average um, length of those conversations. So in this case, it's uh, seven minutes for an, for an instant message. Um, now that could be that, that may be in comparison to, say, 15 minutes for a service desk call, um, or that could be, well, that's seven minutes uh, as an instant message, but the customer's gone away, that's, that's a first-time fix. Um, we haven't then had to go and uh, uh, send that ticket out to second or third line. And again, more detail around whether the, you know, the, the types of user experience, um, the operator responsiveness and essentially the overall scores that we're getting um, for the, from the system. So what are we looking at for the future? Well, the first one around is around uh, a tighter integration between uh, the Living Act platform and Service Manager. So what we want to do is if the, uh, the chat operator um, is, is when the chat operator finishes uh, a ticket and closes the ticket um, or closes the interaction, we want all of that to be uh, sent to Service Manager as a ticket. Um, so it can be immediately closed. Um, we can record it against the customer. Uh, we can record against the user. But we can also then uh, use that for um, quality purposes. More, more to the point is if the chat operator has not been able to uh, solve the quest, solve the problem, um, has not been able to uh, deal with the user's query. We want all of the information that the, the customer has provided to go into a ticket um, so that, that can be then given to a second or third line. And again, that they can see all the interaction that's taken place. Uh, they don't have to uh, question that the customer, um, you know, do, they don't have to go through all the basics again. Um, and that's going to provide us with a much better user experience, uh, especially if that ticket, when that ticket goes to the second or third line, um, they've got they've got all of the the information that's already been gathered. And some of the other ideas that we're working on um, is is to actually present it in uh, multiple uh, multiple languages. Um, so again, 
we're, we're a French company. Um, our business language um, for a, a large number of our customers is English, um, but we'd like to be able to present this in French or German uh, and, and uh, local languages. So um, I'm going to hand over for questions. Um, I can see that the question light's flashing. So uh, Jim, can I pass it over to you for, or you've got some questions sure. for me? Yes, um, we've, we've got quite a few questions. Uh, Mark, good job, by the way. Thank you so much. Um, first question, um, is this particular solution a SaaS solution or on-premise? Okay, um, interesting question. So it's, it's, it's both. Um, it's priced differently depending on the, the type of solution, but it, by default it's a SaaS solution um, and it's priced essentially by the number of interactions, the number of user queries per month. Um, so it's, um, and it scales from I think the minimum, but I did go and look it up, the minimum something like 100 queries per month and it goes up to you know hundreds of thousands of queries per month. Um, but there's also an on-premise version um, which is then charged per user, um, so that it's, it's licensed slightly differently. Um, so for us, we have, we, we're looking at customers who are already interested in, in SaaS, um, so they're, you know, cloud, cloud platforms, absolutely ideal. Um, I believe it's hosted on uh, AWS, um, but we've got a number of secure customers who are interested um, in this sort of platform. but. Are wary about the types of data that uh, you know could could be uh, exposed. So looking at uh, an on-premise solution. Um. Cool. Thank you. That, that makes sense. Um, the the follow-on question is, uh, what's been the feedback um, that you've gotten from your users thus far? I, I know it's early stage, but <laughs> so the feedback so far has been uh, very positive. Um, it's taking us a little while to build up the knowledge bases, um, but again, we've been working with the, the supplier around a sort of pre-canned knowledge. Um, I think they use, they, the, the customers just like the fact that they can, um, they can start to answer their own questions, um, don't have to ring the service desk. Not that they don't like talking to our service desk staff. Um, we've got some very helpful people, but sometimes people just want to, to find, you know, we Google, we Google, Quite often these days, you know, everybody just Google's the answer, um, in, and in some of our some of our environments, that's not available. Google's just, um, you know, we, they they don't have access to it, and so they want to be able to provide. We we want to be able to provide a similar similar uh, answers. Well, I mean, the the person coming in has total control. They can decide if they want a live person or the avatar uh, and the timing of that. Um, so it's full control and gives options. So I like exactly. It. Uh, another question: um, How do you improve the knowledge base over time? Yeah, that's pretty key. Well, what exactly are you doing to, to accomplish that? Okay, so what we've done, um, we have a knowledge management process. Um, so once a week, uh, we take a essentially we take a data report from the the back end system uh, within the Living Actor platform. Um, and it gives us a report that tells us the uh, it gives us a list of all of the questions that have gone unanswered. Um, basically done is we've said we will answer the top 10 um, questions each week. So we, each week we build, uh, we build more questions into the back-end platform. Um, it's not a, um, it, it's not a learning platform. Um, it, it does give us a lot of control about the, 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 what the answers that we put in. So we have to actually code, um, we have to code the answers. Um, but yeah, we pick the top 10, um, we code those into the platform. Um, so we grow over time. Okay, thank you. Um, that seems to be all the key questions I have in the in the queue at this point. I know we're way ahead of um, the end time. So, uh, Mark, if you want to jump to any like kind of open discussion with with the uh, participants, um, or we can end early. What, what do you want to do? Um, I, is, is there a, is there an appetite for um, a chat or? Um, I don't know how many. So uh, I'm I'm easy and flexible. Um, I I can we can open it up or we can end early. Okay. Yeah. I, I can't speak to Terry. Would have to explain if we have that chat capability. 
Yes, um, why don't we open it up to the audience that right now everyone is muted, but it is a small enough group that we can uh, unmute your microphones. If you have any questions for Mark or you'd like to have a dialogue around various topics within this you know, special interest group space, feel free. You can do it by raising your hand, um, which is in the control box. Um, I believe next to your name, it is the, yes, uh, you know what, let me uh, give you that capability to raise your hand, and then we can unmute you. Yeah, so, so Mark, obviously this is a work in progress um, over, over time with all the continuous improvement plans, so I mean definitely keep us posted, um, we'll be on the lookout for, you know, your, your next uh, versions coming out and the improvements you talked about earlier. Um, obviously, this is kind of the wave of the future uh, here in the state. Yeah, so avatars are actually co very common. As a consumer, I half the sites I visit, power companies, etc., all have it. Yes, yes. I mean, the issue, say, the the, the the I suppose one of the key issues for us was that we have a number of I'll call them legacy service management platforms, and I don't want to be negative. You know, they are. They work. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. Um, but for some of it, I mean, we've got platforms with sort of 150, 200 different customers on, you know, close to probably 25,000 users um, across those those customers. And making changes to those platforms, as you can imagine, is not something we can do overnight. Um, so we've got customers asking us for uh, new technologies, new techniques, new ways of working. Um, and I know that there are roadmap items for things like service manager around uh, chat ops and you know all these new technologies but we can't get there fast enough um, so this for us is at the moment a point solution um, it, it may not it may be different in a year's time in two years time um, but today it's helping us to address uh, an issue that um, we, we, we can't easily solve with on the, the legacy platforms okay Good, good comments. Um, I didn't see anybody raise their hand, so what I think we'll do is kind of wrap this up and give everybody, okay. everybody back a chunk of their day. Um, and again, Mark, thank you so much for kind of uh, presenting through this. Um, everyone, uh, this will be, as stated earlier, archived um, for you to grab in a couple days. And um, please feel free to do so. And uh, you know, we're getting towards the end of the calendar year, so look forward to vivid announcements in general um, on the Discover Conference in Vegas and some other, you know, annual events that, that everybody we've, looks forward to. We've got one in London first. Well, well I'm sorry, that's right. <laughs> what's, and, what, and what's the date on that one? Uh, it's the 29th of November to the 2nd of December, I think, if, if I'm... That, that sounds correct. All right, well, we're going we're gonna to wrap up and conclude. Uh, thank you, everyone, and have a great day. Bye-bye. Thanks.